It seems that very often, anytime there's discussion about automotive stocks, the only name brought up is Tesla, the fiery bubble that it is, right? A lot of investors seem to have forgot they aren't the only company who makes electric vehicles. And competition is coming very soon or is already on the way in the case of Volkswagen, whose stock has surged in the recent weeks. Hey, my name is Tucker Krause and welcome to my channel where I go through my investing journey as a 14 year old and give my thoughts and opinions on a variety of personal finance related topics and issues. In today's video, I'm going over just a few uh, automotive stocks very quickly, but like always, make sure to do your own research as I'm not a financial advisor. But before we get into the video, make sure to smash that like button. Let's get into it. Of course, the electric vehicle business is booming, but many manufacturers are still largely prototyping their fully electric vehicles. So I believe that as they come out of these early stages, along with other economic conditions that have recently taken place, there is a chance that they could rally even more since March 2020. The two main companies I'm going to focus on in this video are Ford and General Motors. I know, very boring compared to Tesla, but they stood the test of time. Just ignore all the bailouts. Ow. But that also goes for all of these companies. Tesla and Ford both receive government subsidies and GM is the main one that needs to be saved from bankruptcy, which to be fair, makes it a scary option. But still, again, do proper research for any of them as again, not financial advice. All right, so on your screen, I have Ford pulled up on MarketWatch. They are $12.81 stock. I have their three-year chart pulled up to show you how they have performed since COVID struck at the beginning of March of 2020. And so you can see that they have definitely rallied coming out of March 2020, but they haven't rallied nearly as hard as some other stocks going from, you know, $9, $10 to about $12. So when you then start to scroll down, you can then see that throughout all of 2020, they outperformed their estimates for their quarterly numbers, which of course is a good thing. Then you can keep going through their analyst ratings currently on your screen now. You can see that they, for the most part, are a hold going up to about three months ago. And for the most part, they are not a sell, they are a buy slash hold and keep going. They are mostly a maintained or upgrade stock, not a downgraded stock. Although Morgan Stanley did downgrade them at the beginning of February of 2021. So you can keep going over to GM. They've definitely rallied harder coming out of COVID going from like a $35 stock up to about a $60 stock, but they have, again, outperformed most of their estimates throughout each quarter of 2020. And their analyst ratings actually have the mostly as buys, not holds. And again, you can go here, maintains and upgrades throughout the whole thing, which again, all good signs coming from MarketWatch. Of course, before you think about buying either of these companies, you should definitely do much more in-depth research. I just want a quick overview of each of these. So then you can go for each of their PE ratios. At this moment, you can see Ford, you know, that doesn't have one available, but you can see that GM's is actually very reasonable as quarter four 2020, they had a 9.62 PE ratio on screen is what it is right now. All right, I've just got pulled up on screen Ford's website just so I can quickly show you like what some of the electric competitors might be to Tesla and see this is currently Ford's only fully electric vehicle when you hit electrified other than that it's all hybrids except for this uh as far as i know this is brand new uh coming in late summer of 2021 right here with the electric engine touts many of those same specs that tesla does and seemingly compared to tesla is actually very reasonably priced as when you go over to the model 3 their cheapest model Yes, it does get as low as 30 grand, but that's with rear wheel drive, which as far as I know, is pretty bad. But when you compare it price wise, they're about the same when you take the long range model of the Model 3. And then, of course, we saw the Cybertruck a few years ago from Tesla, but that never really went anywhere. So it does seem like there is also now coming some innovation in the, you know, larger vehicle space for electric because that seems to be the one big hurdle i'm aware this isn't like technically like a full-on like truck like the cybertruck was kind of like a full-size suv but it is still better than just like a little sedan like most current electrics are the last thing i want to mention is the political situation surrounding this 
it's that not only, yes, electric vehicles are becoming more and more mainstream in support of green energy, but that President Trump has left office, which means many of the tariffs that Ford was going to be facing if they started moving their plants to Mexico are now gone, as it so far has seemed that Biden is not looking to enforce these same tariffs. So as Ford and these other companies start moving their plants from the USA to Mexico, that means they'll be able to manufacture for a lot cheaper, therefore make more money, therefore their stock goes up. I know that's bad things for American jobs, but I wanna try and remain apolitical and purely look at the stock here. I know that Kathy Woods and ARK Invest have started to say that, oh yeah, Tesla, its price is going all the way to the moon, into the thousands, right? Which would place it with a market cap higher than Apple right? It would place it with a market cap in the trillions, right? And so, of course, the people researching this are way smarter and have way more experience than I do, so of course there's a very good chance they could be correct. I just wanted to give my response on why, you know, I don't think that's entirely likely, because as all of these companies start coming out with their own electric vehicles and providing competition to Tesla, it means they're not gonna be able to just single-handedly corner the market. Just cause I wanna just add this in quickly, when you look at it, Ford, they created the first, you know, affordable cars. They create, they basically, you know, created like the modern car, right? That doesn't mean every single vehicle you see on the road today is a Ford. Just because Tesla created the first electric vehicles doesn't mean every single vehicle we see in the future are going to be Teslas. I know with their self-driving, it's said that they'll be able to take over a lot of Uber's market share, but even then, I still don't think that pushes their price into the thousands. So let's just say, theoretically, Tesla manages to take over what Uber does and triple that, right? Uber has about a $100 billion market cap, Tesla's about $625 billion, right? So even if they triple that, they're still not going to be a trillion dollar company. And I'm aware there was insurance and a bunch of other things in this report going on about why Tesla will hit that price target. But right here, there was this hedge fund manager or former hedge fund manager. I'm not sure, but he had gone on this Twitter rant. It goes for a very long ways, poking holes in their insurance theory, right? They even said like stuff like this. I see a lot of student company write-ups and pitches which are better than that ARC 3000 price target for Tesla, which is, that's going pretty hard on him. And he goes on for a while, just the, just taking apart the, how that insurance, their insurance claims would work. So you can go check them out if you want. I'm not going to be reading it at all here, right there. If you want to go see all of the reasoning for why their insurance claims could be possibly wrong for part of Tesla's market cap. And all of this goes without saying that I think it's like that the stock market is going to crash, specifically tech stocks in a similar fashion almost to the dot-com bubble, maybe not as extreme and commodities are gonna boom afterwards. But again, you should look into their reasonings for this as they're all very intelligent and as well as look into, you know, this commodity stuff more. Thanks for watching. Make sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed. And if you're interested in what my portfolio is as a 14 year old investor, that's on screen right now. So I will see you next time.